So we're going to talk about operating leverage. Um, we'll talk about cost structure, industry examples. We'll calculate the degree of operating leverage and go through an example. Now, there are if you have a business which has low fixed cost and higher variable cost, you have that's a low degree of operating leverage, which means a, a, the profit will not fluctuate that much as revenue changes, which means, in other words, it's less risky. In, uh, on the other hand, if you have higher fixed cost but lower variable cost, that's, co that's a higher degree of operating leverage, which means the profit will fluctuate a lot more as revenue changes. So that would also be effectively more risky. So looking at industry examples, uh, high fixed cost industries would be things such as airlines, hotels, uh, major event venues. They have high fixed costs for uh, just getting the operation going. So in the case of an airline, fuel and the crew for a flight, whereas in comparison, uh, you have low variable cost on a per consumer, per client, per customer basis. Um, a lot of modern or high tech is, is also very high fixed cost. If you're thinking of something like pharmaceuticals, the uh, development of new drugs uh, costs huge amounts, often into the hundreds of millions of dollars, whereas the cost of producing uh, or manufacturing the pill that comes out of that uh, R&D effort or even the, uh, it, that's relatively low compared to the price. So they had low variable costs. The same would go with IT as well. Um, Low fixed cost proportion, restaurants, retail outlets, and event operations, there the large proportion of the cost to get a sale are the cost of sales. In other words, the variable cost involved in, a, in making the sale. So food and drink, um, cost of goods for retail outlets, and um, cost of uh, renting or using, uh, using an event venue for the event's operations, as well as contract staff and all that. So operating leverage is essentially a multiplier effect, and that's what the degree of operating leverage is, is talking about here. So it relates the change in operating income to the change in sales volume. So if the operating leverage is high, then a small increase in sales can large, result in a large increase in net operating income. That, of course, goes the other way as well. A small increase in sale, a decrease in sales can result in a large decrease in net operating income as well. So the operating leverage is calculated itself by, uh, by seeing the contribution margin, dividing that by the net operating income. So let's take three businesses, hypothetically, Risky Business, Standard Co., and Safety First. They're all in the same business. Sales and operating income are the same for all three companies. However, Risky Business has the highest fixed operating cost and the lowest variable cost. Um, safety First has no fixed cost and the, but the highest variable cost. And Standard Company is in between, kind of Goldilocks. So the baseline assumptions are given here. You have a number of units sold, 200,000, at a sales price of $20 each. And then... The risky business has variable cost per unit of eight, whereas Standard Co. and Safety have 11 and 14, and they have, as you can see, the risky business has also the highest fixed cost, and Safety Co. Safety First has none. So let's see what the uh, income statement. Here we have the numbers again from the previous slide. So the sales in all four, in all three cases here, here, and here, you're looking at 200,000 times 20, so that's four million. The variable costs will be then in case, these cases 8, 11, and 14 times 200,000 units. So 8 times 200,000, that'll be 1.6 million. 11 is 2.2 million. 14 is 2.8 million. So the contribution margin is just 4 minus 1.6 million. And the same will go for the other two. And now we subtract the fixed operating costs. And that will give us the result, which is, in all three cases, 1.2 million operating income. So as you can see, same sales, same operating income. 
Now the degree of operating leverage, you're looking at the contribution margin, dividing it by the operating income. So for risky business, you have 2.4 over 1.2. So two, standard co, you have 1.5, and safety first, you have one. So now what does it mean? As mentioned earlier, this is a multiplying factor. So the degree of operating leverage times the percentage change in sales will tell you what the percentage change in net operating income will be. So that's why it's kind of a magnifying function. Degree of operating leverage will always be at least one, because if you think about it, if you have no fixed costs, like in the case of safety first, then your contribution margin will be equal to your denominator, which is your operating income. Uh, otherwise, it's always a larger number. So degree of operating leverage is always at least one. So it's a multiplying factor. You multiply by percentage change in sales, that'll give you a percentage change in net operating income, assuming everything else stays the same in terms of cost structures. So what happens is if each of these companies increases sales by 10%, what will be the impact on the profits operating? Okay, well, risky business, if I have a 10% increase in sales, then I'm just taking 2 times 10, so the risky business will have a 20% increase in operating income. And by the same token, you're going to have 15% and 10% for standard co and safety first. So if the operating income was, as it was in the example, 1.2 million, how much would it be now with a 10% increase in sales? Well, you'd have... A 20% increase, so it now would be not 100% of 1.2 million, it would be 120% for risky business. So that's 1.44 million. For standard co, you'd have a 15% increase, so 115% of 1.2 million. So the increase is going to be 15%, uh, that's 1.38 million total. And safety first will also just show 110%, so 1.32 million. Let's double check that. Now, instead of 200,000 units, we're going to sell 10% more. So that's 220,000 units. So let's look at the income statements. So the sales will all be the same, 220,000 times 20, 4.4 million. Now the variable operating costs, again, we're taking the 8, 11, and 14 times the 220,000 units. That gives us these numbers. So we're going to now subtract the fixed operating costs, which are 1.2 million 600 and zero. And that gives us our operating income. Do the subtraction, 1.44, 1.38 million, 1.32. I just see now it's points as opposed to commas, but that's the European way I've just written it here, I guess. So if you look at the original baseline EBT, EBIT rather, that's 1.2 million in all cases. So the percentage change here, well, here you see the increase. That's 240,000, 180,000, 120,000. That's 20%, 15%, and 10%. So the percentage change in e EBIT does reflect a uh, degree of operating leverage times percentage change in sales. So that was it. Short introduction on degree of operating leverage. Thank you for your attention.